On behalf of Pastor and Lady Ming and the Retrieve Your Life family, we welcome you to Retrieve Your Life Ministries, a church that is looking up, reaching out, and caring for all. Let's join today's service, which is already in progress. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Read um, to you Psalms 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So um, today I just want to ask you to give thanks. Amen. Every day, amen. We just need to be thankful because he is good to us. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God is awesome. Yes, he is. It's prayer time. Right. Lay all your troubles at the altar. Amen. 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 You too. Mary and Loma. Prayer time. Amen. Father God, we thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you because you are you, Heavenly Father. We thank you because you are so awesome, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of everything we've done that was not of you up until this moment, Heavenly yes. Father. And Lord, we're just going to continue to thank you. No matter what it is that we're going through, Heavenly Father, we're going to praise you because we know at the end of the tunnel there's a light, Heavenly Father. You're going to bring us through it all. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with us, Heavenly Father, through all our, our trials that we're going through, Heavenly Father. Father God, someone has a heavy heart this morning, Heavenly Father. Someone has lost a loved one, Lord. Lord, I'm just asking you to be with them, Heavenly Father. Give us the strength to go through, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we're thanking you. We thank you on this day, Heavenly Father, because you don't have to do what you do for us, Lord. Lord, somebody got some aching bones, Heavenly Father, but they still labor to work, Heavenly Father. Lord, we woke up in our right minds this morning, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we're going to thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we ask just for a little bit more of you, Heavenly Father. Lord, a little bit more patience, a little bit more love, Heavenly Father. Let us love each other just a little bit more, Heavenly Father. Lord, let us continue to seek you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you touch our children's minds, Heavenly Father. And give them a piece of you, Heavenly Father. Send someone to just give them a word, Heavenly Father. Let them know that you are still in control. So many of our children are lost on this day, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask that you introduce yourself or reintroduce yourself to them, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we just thank you. There's so much going on in this world today, Heavenly Father. So many shootings, so many killings, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we know that you are in control. Man try to say it's you, Heavenly Father, but sometimes we take things in our own hands to work out, Heavenly Father, and we mess up things too, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask you to forgive us for all that, Heavenly Father. Yes. Lord, we ask you to, to teach us to come to you, Heavenly Father, and look to you for everything that we need, Heavenly Father. Because we know you you. You give us everything that we need, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you go into the nursing homes and heal. Go into the hospitals, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you to go into the prisons, Heavenly Father, and bless those that are incarcerated, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you to bless us that's locked up within ourselves, Heavenly Father. So many of us have wandered away from you, Lord, and cannot step out on your word, Heavenly Father. Lord, but I ask that you forgive us again, Heavenly Father, and to get us back on the right track, Heavenly Father. I ask you that you bless every church that's opening your name on this day, Heavenly Father. Let them not deviate from the word that you have sent forth, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you on this day, Heavenly Father. There's so much wickedness that's going on in this world, Heavenly Father. And I ask that you just be with everybody, Heavenly Father. Prepare us to just keep our minds on you, Heavenly Father, to stay in your words and to study and just to go, move forward in your name, Heavenly Father. When that time comes for us to stand still, Heavenly Father, let us be 
persecuted in your name, Heavenly Father. Let us not try to switch sides, Lord, to save ourselves, Heavenly Father, because we know you have another plan for us. Lord, I thank you on this day, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice, Heavenly Father. Give us just what you want us to have, Heavenly Father, some of the needs that we want, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you on this day. In your son Jesus' name, amen. 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 How many of y'all never could meet? Amen. 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 Who, who has God not brought out? You never could have made it. Every time somebody, so many people think they get through things by, them, by themselves. Yes. They think they get through their struggles by themselves. Mm -hmm. They think they make it by themselves. Mm -hmm. But you never would have made it without him. Amen. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because every time you face trials, every time you face life circumstances, God is always right there with you. And every time you come out, you never would have made it if it had not been for the Lord. Amen. Whatever you face in life, when you come out, if it had not been for the Lord, you'd still be in it. And that's why some of us still sit in our mess because God said, you know, we're a little hard-headed, so we have to sit a little while longer. But I never would have made it. You know, every time I, I you know, it's been a long time since I heard that song. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, always one of my favorites when he first came out with that song. And I remember, you know, even when his wife passed, he, he sang that song. But he, never, he, said, he said he never would have made it. You know, you got to think about it. Even when we lose those whom we love so dearly, you got to understand and know that you still wouldn't make it without him. If it's not for if, if God is not with you, you're not gonna make it. But in order for God to be with you, you gotta be with Him. Amen. Amen. You gotta trust the Lord. Amen. So how many of y'all know know that know that you you've made it, but it was by His grace. Amen. Amen. Because God's grace and his mercy is, is so awesome. We, we, sometimes we just forget about him even being there. His grace and his mercy is just so awesome to me. It, it really is. Uh, a, a, a good friend of mine died uh, yesterday. Uh, grew up with him down in, when I was in the projects in, in uh, Carl Square Village. Uh, some of y'all might know him. His name is uh, Pastor Carl Roach. Uh, he's pastor Trinity Church out in uh, in North County, and uh, I remember being as a child. Paul was always older than us, and he used to always, you know, he, uh, tell us stories or take us here or take us there, you know, or, or scold us when we weren't doing right. And when I remember when he became a man of God, and uh, and I went to his church and and, and just listened to him when he was he, he really was such a great he was a great teacher. I had to give him that. He really was a, a man of God that spoke and taught the word of God. And uh, he had cerebral palsy. And uh, his health had uh, taken a, a, a turn for the worse about a year or so ago. And he finally uh, moved on with the Lord uh, yesterday morning, said about 5 a.m. So if you would, uh, in, your, in your prayers, just pray for the Roach family and pray for the Trinity uh, Baptist Church family, amen. amen. Because you know we all got to uh, see that day, right. amen. 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 Everybody's gonna see that day. You know, I, I you know, I, I really look forward to praying over a lot of y'all funerals, amen. <laughs> y'all didn't catch that. <laughs> didn't catch that on the way home. I, I look forward to praying over all y'all funerals, amen. Uh, that means I'm still here. Amen. Right. <laughs> so, but if I'm not, hey, you know, life goes on. Because whatever you, like, that's another trial, another a circumstance that you have to face is death. But you never will make it without the Lord. 
You're not going to make it without the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Man, it's October already. The year is really zoomed right on past us. Well, I don't think we had a summer. Amen. Are they talking about 80 degrees this coming week, this week? 80. Yeah. I think by Thursday, it's supposed to half will be 80 in October. So, we haven't had a summer, and we, I don't know if we're going to really have a fall. <laughs> and we might not even have a winter. So, but it's all in God's hands. You know, I, I pray for the people out on the East Coast right now. They're getting uh, getting pounded by those storms out there from the hurricane. Joaquin, Joaquin, Joaquin. And his name? Yeah. Joaquin. Joaquin? Yeah. And you know, that, that, that East Coast is getting pounded pretty bad. So we just keep praying for everybody out there. And, and, and you know, uh, I don't know if anybody's been paying attention. Brother Marlon had brought it to my attention because I really wasn't paying attention. Uh, that Russia has now started to bomb Syria. How many of y'all know the significance of that? Anybody? What is it? Uh, if Syria goes, we all gone. Not, not Syria. Damascus. 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 Pray for that city, Damascus. They can bomb Syria all they want to. But when, when Damascus falls, that's the end. You better read your word. You better preach your word. Read your Bibles. When the city of Damascus falls, that's the beginning of the end. He stated it in the word. It's in the word of God. And that's why I keep praying for Damascus, amen. And, you know, I pray for Syria. But, you know, it's, 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 it's funny, you know, how uh, I heard them teaching in the, in the Sunday school lesson today that there's, we need to start paying attention to the Word of God because there's so many things happening in the world today that's right here in the Word. And he even told us, he told us that we were going to have wars and, and famines and all these things, right? He said for, for, for the horrors to come. That we we looking at something that's bad to, to us today, but he said the horrors to come. It's gonna be something even worse than that. But are we ready? Are we prepared? Are we physically, mentally, but yet spiritually prepared for what we're about to face? It's time for people of God to start really getting ready spiritually. It's time to stop playing with God. I'm, I'm telling you, time is short. <laughs> And you all know that time waits on no warning. Are you really ready? Get yourself ready. You know, TD Jason always tell you, he, he, he tripled it up, say, get ready, get ready, get ready. And it's time for people, it, it really, it's time for people to get ready. Because I, I, I really believe that when he was saying that then, he was telling people, it's get ready. Time is short. But we don't pay attention. What well, we care about is our, our, our life, our, our little measly peasly lives, which don't really mean jack. It really don't. We talk about storms and things come, we, we worry about our house, or it, it, it's when it's sure. When that day comes, it, it, don't, it don't matter about your house or nothing else, because you and your house going. <laughs> But are you ready? Spiritually, are you ready? <laughs> and when I say spiritually, it means more than you coming here on Sunday morning and sitting in these seats. Are you spiritually ready? Because one day, we're all going to have to face what Pastor Roach faced. Death. Get yourselves ready. Start reading the word. Read with each other. Pray with each other. Get ready. I heard Minister Williams tell y'all doing Sunday school, I heard him say, you're going to come like a thief in the night. It's in the word. He done gave you fair warning. I'm going to come like a thief in the night because when you sleep, and that thief comes, sometimes people don't even hear the thief coming. Right. I'm going to come like a thief in the night. You're not going to even know I'm there. Yeah, but
better get it right. Get it right, get it right, get it right. That's all I can say. Good morning again, uh, October the 4th, 2015. And, and you know, we, we it's almost time for uh, that, 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 that annual day of thanks. <laughs> hey man, you know when everybody stay here, but everybody thankful on that day. <laughs> oh, we're gonna thank God for, for the whole year. Hey Amen. We wait to November the twenty sixth. But it's almost that time. November's right around the corner. I mean think about it. We're already in the it's already the fourth of October. How many of y'all ready for Christmas? <laughs> Y'all already ready, huh? How many of y'all bought Jesus on? Me. You know, some of y'all lying. You know that, don't you? Amen. Me. You bought Jesus on Leslie? Me. You bought... You, what? Me. You bought you for Jesus? To God, yeah. Amen. Uh, we're going to test... We're gonna, you know you're going to test that theory, don't you? Mm -hmm. Amen. So, since so she said that, y'all know how we do. I got to go on into the joke. <laughs> <laughs> That was this woman, she treats her husband to a to a strip club for his birthday. Now at the club, the doorman says, hey, Jim, how are you? And the wife says, how does he know you? And Jim says, oh, dear, I play football with him. Now inside, they go in and the bartender says, the usual Jim? And Jim says to his wife, before you say anything, he's on the dark team. <laughs> Now next a stripper comes and she said, hey Jim, do you crave that special again? The wife storms out the door dragging Jim with her by the, by the back and they jump into a cab. And the taxi driver says, hey that Jimmy boy, you picked up an ugly one this time. <laughs> Jim's funeral is on Sunday. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. This is what Bible. This is what God. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Stay out of the hustler and, and, and the pink slip. <laughs> Amen. You, you, you stay out of them clubs because you know they start. You, it's like cheers. Everybody know you by name. <laughs> Amen. How many of y'all go to them strip clubs? Ain't nobody gonna raise their hand now. I know y'all go. Amen. Used to. They do it like this. The devil says, don't raise it. <laughs> Amen. Now, you know, they get, they get them clubs. And... Amen. Stay out them clubs. Stay out them clubs. Yeah, I know you ain't got no business in them clubs. Amen. So I just, I just go in there for the drink. They, they, they go to, go to a, a hotel, go to a piano bar or something. They serve, they serve the same drinks. <laughs> Go to your house. Matter of fact, you know, get your body at Snooks or somebody and make your own drink. <laughs> Amen. How many drinkers we got in the house? Oh, boy, Amen. we rolling today, ain't we? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. We got some honest folks in the house. Amen. <laughs> you know, and, uh, the, I'm, no, 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 sir. How many of y'all drink? One, two, three, four. Hey, you gonna be honest about it. Ain't nothing wrong. You you drink. Now, how many of y'all are drunks? Amen. Amen. The Bible says, ain't nothing, let me tell you something. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking. The Bible didn't tell you that you could not drink. The Bible says, do not be a drunk. And you can drink all you want to, socially. But you know, some of y'all get. So, 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 <laughs> so, you start talking like this. Yeah, 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 ah, ah. That's drunk. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Did I say, say it like you mean it? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Turn your Bible to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 5. Start at verse 20. Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 20. Luke. Lukey. Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 20. And we're not going to talk about drunks today, amen. Luke chapter 5. Starting at verse 20. We're there, amen? 
Amen. And I'm reading out the NIV. Luke chapter 5, verse 20. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Jesus said now, Friend, your sins are forgiven. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Didn't take much, did it? No, no, no. much. So now y'all remember that when I when I get through this this word this morning, don't take much. Because this morning I want to talk to you about, and that's why I listened to this song. And she, I, 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 I didn't ask the, for her to play this song. Uh, Marvin Sapp never would have made it. But the message this morning is, don't give up now. And when I heard this song, I, I said, okay, Lord, you're you on, you on point with this. Don't give up now. Cause so many people give up. We give up hope. We just give up everything. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Now you got you gotta understand, this this is this is the time when Jesus was going around uh, performing miracles. Amen. Here is with one when he, he forgave and he healed a paralyzed man. If you, you know the story about the man that was paralyzed and, and, and his friends took him to see Jesus, but they, they couldn't get in. So they went up to the roof and dug through the roof and they let they lowered him down in front of Jesus. And what did Jesus tell them? Do what? Pick up your mat and go. Pick up your mat and walk. Whatever you want to say. But this is the point. This is what this is when Jesus was talking to this man. And he did this right in front of the crowd. And, and, and when he told him, friend, your sins are forgiven. This is just like what he's telling us today. Friend, your sins are forgiven. Don't give stop being stop giving up so much. Stop giving in so easily. Your sins are forgiven. People are going to condemn you. Amen. People are going to talk about you. Amen. People are not going to like you. Amen. But your sins are forgiven. Forget what they think. Amen. God said your sins are forgiven. Why, was, why, why, all the time, why do we get so caught up with what people think about us? Let me tell you something. This is not high school. You know, ain't no, ain't no, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't got to worry about trying to run for Mr. and Mrs. Popular. It's not a popularity contest. Right, 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 right. Don't give up. Don't give up now. Point number one, your present circumstances can be overcome. We was talking about that earlier. You know, and I was talking about circumstances and, and things that people go through. But you got to understand and believe that they can be overcame. Whatever it is that you're in right now, your present circumstance can be overcome. If you don't give up. A lot of people say they trust the Lord. But when the circumstance hits, they get all into their feet fees. Trust them went out the window. Because the first person you got, let me tell you something. And you can sit here and lie to yourself all you want to. But when that thing hits you, the first thing you do is you either get on the phone to your BFF or whoever. You ain't got on your knees, you ain't open up no word, you ain't start praying, you on the phone. And if you're not calling, you text. Amen. Or they on Facebook. You know, they put everything on Facebook. Amen. Woo! I'm sure going through the day. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. And then I see the next person say, that MF. <laughs> and I'm like, what happened to overcoming? <laughs> See, don't you know that when, 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 when you're trying to overcome, when that thing hits you and you're trying to overcome and you're trying to get through, don't you know that Satan is already right there with you? He's, when you're trying to push forward, he's steady pulling you back. Amen. And some of us, we get caught up, we just start moonwalking. Amen. I ain't finna moonwalk for you. Because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. We just, the devil don't have to pull us. We just go right along. But you got to learn how to overcome. I, I don't get it when, when, when the Lord himself says, friend, your sins are forgiven. 
when, when, when he tell you your sins are forgiven, you can't worry about what everybody else think. Amen. You can't worry about what everybody else going to do. Well, well what, what's so-and-so going? Who cares what they going? What about you? So that's what's wrong with people today. We always in everybody else's business. See? We're always worried about what everybody else is doing or what they're going through. And, and, and can't even fix our own stuff. Ain't even went to the Lord about our own mess. Don't give up. And some of us get so low, we just say, I'm just tired of fighting. I'm just, I'm just tired. Tired of what? Get up. Donna McClurg told you to just stand. Donna McClurg also said when we fall, we get up. Marvin says, don't give up. You never would have made it if it wasn't for him. Don't give up. Don't you know he always got your back? Don't you know he's always with you? When you woke up this morning, somebody somebody rose you up. You didn't rise on your own. What if you didn't have the ability to get up? What if you you could you know you woke up but you couldn't move? And some of y'all with your significant others, if they if that does happen, are you gonna still be there? Uh oh. Or are you gonna give up and say, I can't I, I can't I can't deal. I can't do that. I need somebody that can walk. <laughs> I'm not going to push no wheelchair and pick nobody up and put them on the top. I'm not cleaning up nobody. Keep it real, Pastor. Keep it real. That's real talk right there. Yeah. How many How many going to give up and say, not me? Going to go find you somebody that can walk, go to the bathroom on their own. <laughs> you get change drop. Cause reality and them change. This ain't no reality show. Reality sets in. You got to learn how to overcome. You got to be an overcomer. You got to trust in the Lord. No matter what it is that you face, no matter what it is you got to go through, don't give up. That's right. Nobody said that everything was going to be right, that everything was going to be safe, that everything was going to be good to the end. <clears throat> Present circumstances can be overcome if you trust the Lord that much not to give up on it. Because see, when you give up, you give up on God. You just, you might well just slap God in the face and say, you know what, you're alive. You can't do those things. Because that's what you're saying. Because if you're, you're, if, you're, if you're the half, your spouse or, or your girlfriend or your mate or your partner or whatever it is, they get something happen to them and they, they tell you get in the car and they can't walk no more, they paralyzed, you got to be the one that, that takes care of them, put them in the car, take them to the doctor, clean up after them, take them to the bathroom, clean up after them, wash them, brush their teeth, comb their hair, put their clothes on, you got to go, take them up, put them in the bed, take them out of bed. <laughs> Oh my. Yeah. How many overcomers we got in here this morning? Amen. 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 I heard a few, man. One of y'all didn't, did you sit with somebody, just say, Lord, please don't let it happen to me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can ask this question in a lot of churches this morning. And a lot of people are going to say, Amen. And a lot of them with an Amen lie. <laughs> who gonna 
sit in church and don't even want that credit card say. Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm gone. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's reality. Oh, my, 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 my. You might have a few honest folks that say, you know, Pastor, I, I, I couldn't deal with it. I, I'd have to go. That would be the one I had a respect for. For being honest about who they are and their feelings. And with prayer, hopefully and prayerfully, that they can overcome that. But the one sitting there knowing that they're not going to do nothing and just lying. Amen, Pastor. I'm with you. Yeah, I sure hope I don't get hurt and you had to push me. <laughs> Got to learn how to overcome. Point number two. Hmm. This is good. There are friends. <laughs> I'm going to say that loosely. There are friends who are willing to help you. <laughs> no. That's my friend, Pastor. There are friends willing to help you. That's my friend right there. <laughs> But there are friends willing to help you. Because you know what? Some, now, how many of y'all got friends that are willing to help you right now? Amen. Amen. We, we, all, we got some friends that's willing to help us, right? Amen. But we got some friends that we that we do when we call upon them, they disappear. Amen. Huh? Yeah. And then we still call them friends. <laughs> My mama always told me, you ain't got no friends. Right. You got associates. Right. Because those are just people you associate with. Right. See, because a friend is going to always be there, no matter what. You know, we all, we all, we all, how many, how many of y'all got friends right now that you can just call upon right now if, if you really needed them for whatever, and they they're Johnny on the spot? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's a friend. And you got so many people that are willing to help you as friends. And see, some friendships, we, we, we turn away. You hear what I'm saying? Some friendships we push to the side because we don't want to be associated with these individuals. It could be because of how they look, it could be because of how they act, it could, it could be anything because of what you think. But God sent them into your life for a reason. Some of them are going to be for, to be for uh, a true friend, and some of them are going to be for some life lessons. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Some of y'all might well go home right now and pull out that old OJ's record. <laughs> Backstabs. <laughs> you ain't got to pull out a record. Just get on your phone and pull it up on YouTube. Right. Cause I, you know, how many of y'all have some backstabs that, that stabbed you in your back? Amen. Huh? Amen. Now, reverse that. Amen. How many of y'all have been some backstabs? Amen. 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 Oh, I love honesty. Because see, you know, when, 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 when it comes time to when it comes down to it, and when it really comes time to it, you gotta be honest with yourself. Right. You know, you, you you can't give up. And, 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 and let me tell you something. If you can't be honest with you, you might as well just go on and give up. Because you've got to be honest with you. Because you're going to, you know, we tell my friends going to be willing to help you. How many of y'all call yourselves friends to somebody else? And are you willing to help them? Amen. Get on my nerve. Every time I turn around, they need something. Every time I turn around, I just say, I know it automatically. As soon as I see them, here they come. I don't see them until they want something. I don't hear from them until they want something. But these are my friends. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. If I don't see my friend or hear from my friend in 10 or 20 years, still my friend. If he call him John on the spot, I'm trying to find my friend now. He done changed his number, ain't, ain't, we, we lost contact. I'm trying to track him down. I know he in Colorado. I know where he at. I might have to roll up there. <coughs> <coughs> All right, Lord, I'm going to cough because I'm lying. 
I ain't rolling nowhere. I'm going to have to fly there. Amen. How about that? You say I ain't joking, so I'm, I'm telling the truth. Tell the truth. I'm going to have to fly up there and roll down on the brother. All right. Let's get there. But this is my friend. See, I know if I find him and we haven't talked, I can find him and say, man, I need you right now. He Johnny on the spot. And my other friend up in the, both of them in Colorado. Them up in the Denver area. If I call Tony right now and say, man, I need X amount, X amount, X amount. He ain't gonna ask me why or what I need it for. He just gonna say, okay, Bill. That's what they call me, Bill. Don't, don't y'all try that. Amen. <laughs> Bill, I got you. Okay. Or if they ever need anything, it's not. It's, it's not, there's no hesitation. It's, it's not even a question. It's here. Because if you're a friend to somebody, you got to always be willing to help. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jelly, how long you, Mookie, and, 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 and Ashanti a a a a been knowing each other? I'm going to call you Kenitra. Not a line. Right. <laughs> What's your say? I'm out of line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say something on camera, but I'm not. Amen. <laughs> but how long y'all been knowing each other? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. A long time. Now they call themselves BFFs. Well, I guess I'm lying. <laughs> guess they're not BFFs. They, they, they BFFs. <laughs> but when you think about it, now think about it though, seriously. This is me. This is just this is me. This is past me. This is how I feel. This is what I see. I feel that one, if either one of those three ever needed anything, they don't have to ask. I've seen them in action where sometimes one already the red, the other one's mine. <laughs> or one has answered before one finished. And if one of them ever needed something, it, there's no hesitation. I've seen it with my own eyes. Now, do they always get along? Heck no. Amen. Basically, when you when it boils down to it, we're talking about friends, they really like sisters. Like family. What does family do? Amen. They do, don't they? Amen. But there's always love, isn't it? <clears throat> when it's all said and done, yeah. there's always love. And they're always willing to help one another. I've listened, I've watched, and looked at the, 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 the friendship that has developed between uh, Minister Williams and, and, and Brother, brother uh, Derek. And in my heart, I know for a second, if he needed something, he's not going to hesitate, and vice versa. But see, Brother Mono, a proud man. Brother was moving. We offered the help. I got it. <coughs> and I said, praise the Lord, because you know I can't move nothing nowhere. But I was going to offer you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. When he said he got it, I turned around quick and just said, change the step. <laughs> but I offered. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And the same way with, with me and Brother Marlon. You know, over, over, over the years, you know, we, we used to work together when I was in Scott, and, you know, our, our friendship that's developed. And I know right now for a fact, people always say, oh, that, you know, people that, people that, that, that come here that ain't been here, I ain't seen them in a while, they'll say, how your right hand doing? <laughs> I say, she, I mean, he's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got to understand the true meaning of friendships. People get caught up with being friends, but understand, even though through friendships, there are going to be trials. Even in friendships, there's going to be circumstances. And when those trials hit that friendship, 
do you do you tear the friendship apart because of your feelings? Some people have. Some people ain't spoke to their best friend in, in 20, 30 years because of something that happened 20 years ago. He stole my man. It wasn't yours in the first place. We, we was married. He, 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 he didn't. Never mind. <laughs> Y'all get the picture. Oh boy. Y'all get the picture. Can't steal nothing that wasn't yours. Amen. This is what we have to do, you all. Point number three. God is waiting for you to come to him. Ah. Here we go with Jesus. I'm going to read that verse again. When Jesus saw their faith, <laughs> when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, no faith. <laughs> See, that's the wrong answer. I hope so. There shouldn't, there shouldn't even be no hope. You should already have faith in him. Because God is waiting for you to come to him. Quit going to everybody else with your issue. <laughs> Let me call the pastor. And I, first, I'm going to tell you, right from now, when y'all start calling me, I'm going to say, did you pray? Did you talk to God first? That's what I'm asking. Because he tells you, hey, God is waiting on you. We're always waiting on God. Huh? We send up our prayers, and we waiting on God. But God is waiting on you. When I always tell y'all about the word, I say the word requires what? Action. Action. I mean, God is back waiting on you to do something. Don't give up now because, you know, when you give up, ain't nobody happy but the devil. When you give in so easily, ain't nobody happy but him because he has victory. And you easily gave it to him, which we so you know, which we so uh, readily do most of the time. We get right on in to say, "How many of y'all had an argument this past week?" Amen. Now, did you accomplish anything? You did with your argument. Amen. Y'all got through it. Got my point across. Got your point across. They ain't like it, but. Amen. You didn't like it, but you said it. Yeah. Now. I didn't say I won. You didn't say you won? <laughs> but you know, most times, you know, in our situation, brother, we're not going to win. Anymore, so. <laughs> we just talking, just be talking. <laughs> and you think about it, though. God is waiting on us to make a move. He's waiting on us to make a move. We, start, we, we have arguments, and then we don't, we, 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 we don't think about what we're saying or what we're doing. And then, you know, because you one saying one, one saying one, one saying one, one saying one, you go back and forth. But it's almost like a tennis match. And then, you know, when you're playing tennis, somebody got to lose, don't they? Huh? And sometimes when we get an argument, sometimes as far as men are concerned, it be, it be, it be six lose. <laughs> You know, if y'all know how to score tennis, you know, six love, I mean, you know, they got, they got six points and you, you ain't got none. So that means, you know, and that means, you know, you just get your racket and go sit down somewhere. When are you going to come to the Lord? Y'all stop worrying about Kings. Kings to run this place. <laughs> when are you going to come to the Lord? When are you going to stop being fake about it and start being real about it? You know how y'all used to say back in the day? I'm about it, about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know y'all used to say that back in the day? Oh, I'm just, I'm just about it, about it. <laughs> how about being about it, about it for the Lord? <laughs> See, we give up too easily. Life throws things at us, 
And instead of us saying, ouch, put a band-aid on it and let it heal, we have a condition. And just start jumping all around, running all around, you know, roll all around on the floor and everything, and nothing gets healed. Because you don't know how to not give up. We give in too easily to Satan. We make, we make Satan's job easy. We really do. We make his job easy. Satan starts whispering in our ear and we just say, okay. All right. We get right on into it. We got to learn how to stop doing that. We got to learn how to stop being so easy. You know me and how y'all used to talk about them women y'all with? Oh, she is. I bet you didn't say that about the one you with. You ain't gonna admit it either, is you? Because you know you did. <laughs> Amen, we all did. She is. I got this. And women, y'all ain't get out y'all ain't exempt, y'all do the same thing. Say that. I got him. <laughs> yeah, I got him wrapped around my finger. He do what I tell him to do. Amen. When I say do. But you ain't gonna tell him that. Right, right, right. Still right. Because you don't want to give up. You don't want to start an argument. And I sometimes, I, I, you know, I, you know I, I can't, I'm not going to sit and say, me and the lady ain't arguing, we, we, we had our arguments and everything, but you know what? I, every time, I'm, I'm glad we're at a point now where there's not a lot of arguing, but a lot of discussion. Now, this, when I say discussion, don't mean that the voices don't raise. Amen. But ain't no more them words, you know, y'all use going back and forth, them, them other words. You know, because it, it's, it's nonsense. What gets accomplished? Nothing but people's feelings are hurt. Amen. That's all. That's that's all that's done. Because when, when you get through arguing, you still got the same problem. You still got the same problem. And you still got to learn not to give up. One way or the other. So I'm asking you all this morning, don't give up. Now or never. Whatever you face, whatever you got to go through, do not give up. Amen? Amen. Emmanuel. Amen.